Greetings! How have you been? I've been having a blast working on my Game Boy Advance game, so much so I've kind of forgotten to post the videos. <laughs> but we back and it's time for more fresh content. Thank you for the comments on the last video. It was pretty cool, except for all the people who kept saying, just use GB Studio. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's a pretty cool engine. Except for the fact that it makes Game Boy Color games when I want to make a Game Boy Advance game. Two very different consoles, by the way. And also, also, did you ever consider that maybe I love coding? Can't you tell by how much joy it brings me every day? <laughs> Uh, bu -bu -bu. Oh, let the suffering begin. Last episode, we got the player moving around, but no collision. So let's tackle that next. First things first, don't forget, we're making a 3D platformer. So defining the collision in our tile map editor isn't as simple as drawing shapes, since we also need to find a way to associate a Z height with all this collision data. To do so, I've created these numbered tiles to represent the collision. The number, of course, correlates to how tall the collision should be in 3D space. So this, for example, tells the game that this is a two tile high structure. The only downside is it's kind of a hassle to have to draw these on separately, but it is what it is. Not if I have anything to say about it. What? Ah! Captain Collision! Yes, it is I. Ah, my funny bone. To improve this collision situation, why don't we take advantage of Tiled Map Editor's auto-tiling system? That way tiles, walls, and collision can be drawn simultaneously. Ah, uh, it feels so weird. And while the auto-tiling can be a little janky, you can always disable it to make fine tweaks, giving you the best of both worlds. Thanks, Captain, Captain Collision. Uh, I think I'm dying. You're welcome, children. Collision Tastic. Boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, okay. So we have the collision data. We just need to use this collision data to do collision. Now to start with 3D collision, it's important that we break it down into the most basic possible form. Given a point in 3D space and an offset on one of the three axes, can the point move to the offset? And if not, what is the furthest offset it can move to? So to be pixel perfect, you don't really have a choice but to check pixel by pixel. Not if I have anything to say oh about God. it. Captain Collision! Bro, you were just here a second ago. And I always will be here, as long as there is collision to be optimized. Look, I don't even need- Why that. check pixel by pixel when you can check tile by tile? Think about it. If adjacent tiles are both empty, it's a valid move. But if you find a tile that isn't empty, just use the mathematics to locate the furthest pixel allowed. Uh oh. Okay, but what about diagonals? Not a problem. While they require different formulas depending on the axis, once you figure them out, it's simply a matter of implementation. Oh, okay. Thanks. You're welcome, child. Collide with your heart, and don't forget to fart. Dun 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 dun. So with our point to point collision done, we can now generate this box of eight points to use as our player's collider. If the front four points of any direction can be moved, it's pretty much safe to say the entire box can be moved. Uh, yeah, of course, this isn't a perfect box collider. For example, pointy structures can cause issues, but we can write fast code to check for special cases like this. Anyway, ba da ba da ba, there we go. We got player collision down and out. Next is actually making the player jump, which is no different from how you would make a player jump in a 2D game. And well, bam, 3D collision done. Our player can now jump on the 3D tiles and they can also fall off them. And we're doing kind of good almost, except for one major issue. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so even though we got the 3D physics working, the tile map doesn't obscure the player when they're behind 3D structures. To fix this, we first have to ensure that all the tiles the player can walk behind are assembled on a certain layer. To determine whether the player appears below this layer, let's assume each tile with 3D depth casts a shadow the same length as it is tall. If the player resides in a shadowed tile and their Z position is below the top of the shadow's caster, we place the player behind a layer and in front otherwise. And with this one rule, things work out pretty well. <laughs> it's actually like starting to look like a real game, oh my god. Except not because of situations like this or this. Since all the tiles the player can appear behind are on the same layer, it's impossible to sandwich a player in between tiles that can obscure them. Now normally we just allocate more layers. Unfortunately, the GBA has a hardware limitation of at most four tile map layers. Where the hell am I gonna put another wall layer? Oh, oh god. <laughs> I told you I'd be back. <gasps> the personification of the GBA's limitations. Stay away. No worries. 
Stay behind me. I'll protect you. Captain Collision? No, stop. He's too strong. We'll see about that. Oh, wait. He kind of fast, though. Hey. Ah! Uh, uh, Captain Collision? No! Unfortunately, there's no good solution. A sacrifice must be made. It's either have extra tiles, or be able to put tiles close to each other. At the very least, I can make this decision on a map-to-map -map basis. I guess it's not the end of the world, but it might be a little tedious. Thankfully, I can just document it on my Miro workspace. Oh. You don't know what Miro is? Well, they're the sponsor for this video. Instead of writing all my thoughts in an unsaved notepad that's deleted the second Windows does a surprise update, I've begun to write them down in my Miro digital workspace. It's like having an alternative desktop, but bigger. And you can write as many notes as you want and even connect them together, change the colors, or even free draw if you're good at that. Oh wait, but no, it's okay because it's saved online and you can just edit it from anywhere. For my workspace, I use a lot of shapes, arrows, and text for like the complicated like gameplay features I need to incorporate versus like the level design area where I'm just drawing out the entire world I'm thinking of at the moment. And then I also have a section for like video development though that's a bit more chaotic because that's what I'm doing right now. There's also like a ton of templates and apps you can incorporate into Miro. You can just use one of these and you're good to go. You can actually even program your own apps with their web SDK if you really want to get technical. You know I do. <laughs> so yeah, Mira, try it out for free. Link in the description. By the end of this video, I want to have a fun platforming prototype, which means first things first, polishing up the player. Okay, how about we start with making some new sprites? And it's, you know, it's not like I hate our original guy. He's just not what I'm looking for. While we're at it, let's also draw some fake particle effects. I mean, because you can't use real particle effects on the GBA. But what you can use is programmatic squishy animation. Let's also try and add a fun platforming mechanic. I actually gave the player a running feature a while ago, but it was trash and boring, and it wasted the B button. I ended up having the player just run by default anyway. The replacement B feature is actually three moves in one. On the ground, it's a quick dash, and if you jump while you're dashing, you can do the super jump, and when you hit B in the air, you do the bounce move. Boom. Moving platforms are a fundamental part of platformers. I mean, it's literally in the name. <laughs> the only issue is more collision. Yeah. We can't use the current collision system since it's built around the statically defined tile map data. How do you, with optimal performance, check for a random collision box that can be at any pixel in the entire map? I mean, obviously, you don't want to check every collider every frame. Uh, if only Captain Collision was here. Did you forget what I said? Captain Collision? I will always be here, as long as there is collision to be optimized. Oh, okay. So, what do I do? Why are you asking me? You've managed to solve every collision problem so far. N no I didn't. That was you. Oh, foolish child. I am you. <gasps> Everything you need is already there. Goodbye. Already there? Th that's it. There doesn't need to be a new system. The current collision system uses a giant array of numbers to track the six possible shapes, but we could store up to 255. So why don't we use the rest of these possible values as IDs for dynamic colliders? Then the moving platforms will use this ID to update overlapping vacant slots in the collision array. If the player encounters a non-standard collision value, they can use it as an index to instantly access the dynamic collider and perform complex collision against it. With this system, I could hypothetically have 250 dynamic colliders in a single map without any performance cost. The rest is simply a matter of implementation. Wow. Thanks, Captain. Oh. Yeah. Right. Now finally, the last thing my prototype needs are some maps. And what better way to get some than to outsource ideas from you lovely people. And then anyway, I guess I gotta make like a bunch more. So here we go. And all right, there we go. You can play the new snippet little prototype on Itch.io. And I guess that about wraps it up. Just kidding, it's time for Play Test Mess. The segment where I find some fucking sucker to play test my game for free. Now my boy Toasty Time is into like platformers or stuff. So I dragged him on. Now for our first challenge. Figuring out what the emulator controls are. All right, I'm gonna hit S. Hit S. Didn't work. New button. Oh, uh. Uh -oh. Uh, enter, enter. Oh! Okay, so here's the a? game. 
Where's A? Uh, oh my god, what is that? Okay. SR dude, see, I'm all about the sound design. I made a whole video about sound design. Dude. And there is a lack of sound design here. Wait, collision error. Oh, SR dude, what the oh, heck is no. that? Oh, ma ma okay, chick. may I make a point here? There is a there is a speed running timer in the top oh, left. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, keep going. You almost got it. <laughs> oh, oh! I'm gonna get under five minutes. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> I know that I'm standing off the edge here and it's, I'm not slipping. Look, I'm floating, SR dude. Oh my God, is that really a 100,000 views budget right there? Oh my God, how much game is there? What? Also, your, your timer oh, says shit, I've the been timer. playing this for 30 minutes, oh. or 30 seconds. Oh, so I like fall yeah, down. Really yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's... <laughs> Fuck you, SR dude, what was that? <laughs> I'm gonna get it this time. Oh, it's literally just a troll one. You little. You need to. Can you please make an easy mode? What is this? <laughs> Fucking. Uh, I'm. A, I'm just a human too. Can make normal human. Oh! Yeah. oh! <laughs> what the hell? Oh, here's the final <laughs> boss. By the way. <laughs> I'm, uh -huh. I'm trying to think of like a single thing wrong with the game, and the only thing I can think of is that there's not sound effects. I. Okay. Okay. Here's here's my here's my pro tip. Here's my tip. The first two blocks you don't use super jump. Okay, you super jump. You, just, you specifically made an unbeatable level just so I would suffer. Oh my oh. god! Oh. That could have been the one. Oh, say can you say see America fill my veins with power? Get on that edge, get on that edge. Uh, oh, oh! Oh, don't go that way! Oh my god, no! Wait, you're fine. What do you're I do? Fine. What do I do? Okay, Where okay, do I go? okay Where sorry. Do I go? The right path is a trap. It doesn't go anywhere. You gotta go to the left path. Well, you made a trap. <laughs> <laughs> can I make this without a super jump? Uh, I, I, oh, oh. How the fuck oh do I make God. this jump, SR dude? Oh, oh. I'm getting way better at this. Holy crap. SR dude, you're turning me into an ultimate gamer. I, I think I can just one jump it. Yes, can I, I think just one so jump too. it? I think so. Oh, if you get Where to that go? grass, like, that's it. Just go to the grass. <laughs> you know, I, this game, hey, you know what? One th good thing about this game is it forget it made me forget all about my real life troubles because I discovered that it could be way worse. I could be stuck playing that forever. Damn! <laughs> I, no, I didn't mean it. Hey, no, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs>